Sunday Satsang, December 31st, 2023. This is the conclusion of our ninth year of Sunday Satsang question and answers. We, had, we, had, we tried to answer about 6,000 questions. Interesting. A lot of questions. So, any more questions? Questions. So now see what I don't have any questions. Jai Radhe, <coughs> Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, 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 Jai Radhe, 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 question on internet uh, in some Russian is it possible to attain perfection without guru if you just practice Raganuga Bhakti like uh, just reading books or chanting Hare Krishna is it possible to attain perfection okay and the question is asked just chanting without guru is it possible to <coughs> is it possible to attain perfection in bhakti bhajan, vaidhi bhakti, <coughs> or raganuga bhakti? Read just by reading about Krishna and Gaurani and Vrindavan and meditating. Is it possible to attain spiritual perfection without guru? So the answer is N O. Why am I saying no? Yes. One of the offenses of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamatra is uh, Guru Ravajna and uh, Shruti Shastra Nimra. So, by we are saying we are not accepting Guru, means we are not following Shastra basically. So, that is one of the offenses we commit when chanting the Holy Name. So, we cannot get perfection. Because the argument said, I don't have a Guru, but I am chanting Hare Krishna. I don't have a guru, I am studying Shastra. But the very Shastra you're studying, they order you and direct you to take a guru. If you say, say you study Shastra, Hari Bhakti Yudas. That Shastra is written by Stan Goswami. And in there it says, one who doesn't take Diksha from a guru becomes born as an animal next life. Uh, so you don't accept that? Do you reject that? Then, then you get get the concussion from 16 Chaturgita, Gita, verse 23. Yashasvidim utrija varta te kankarata nasa simavapnati nasa kamna prangatim. Krishna says in 16 chapter, one who disregards Shastra, doesn't follow the teaching of Shastra, gets no perfection. Because your question is, can I get perfection without Guru? No. Guru, Krishna, Guru and Shastra are one. So you can't separate. You can't say, I'll take Krishna, but not Guru. I'll take Krishna and Shastra. I'll take Krishna's holy name and Shastra, but not Guru. You can't separate them. It's like separating heat and light from sunshine. You have sunshine. Can you separate heat and light from sunshine? No. Sunshine means heat and light. So Krishna means Guru and Shastra. There's many people like that because they have bad karma. They're called abhagya. Yes. They're called abhagya. They're unfortunate. So they have a miscon. They have uh, 
Kuburi. Now, Kuburi means bad intelligence. They, they're convinced, they convince themselves that they're correct, their way of life is correct, and it's the opposite. It's called self-deception. Yes. It's very prevalent and prominent in the Kali Yuga, the tendency to, to deceive yourself, to fool yourself uh, with a convincing argument that your mind produces. I just have Hare Krishna mantra. You get all information by chanting Hare Krishna. Every Bible time, every day. It's one of the five things of Bible you get from Hare well, you're, because you don't have a guru, you don't understand Shastra. That's why you're drawing these wrong conclusions. It's totally wrong premise. There's no one ever attained perfection without a guru. You have a bad experience with a guru. You get married, you have a bad experience with your husband and wife. That means you get married again, you're going to have another bad experience. Maybe. It may be your karma. So now it's success in marriage. You get married ten times. You, know, you see some people this kind of married five, six times. It's, it's because they're lusty, maybe, but maybe you just have bad luck. They're trying to find a, a good spiritual relationship, but but their destiny is not to have that. They want that. That's the ideal. Have a good spiritual relationship. So you get married, it doesn't work out. So you get divorced and try again. Because they want out, they want to live with some woman or man and do bhakti, but they're not successful because that's their destiny. They're cursed not to get happiness in marriage or success in marriage, but they can't give up the attachment to the idea or the comfort that it provides, the seeming comfort that it provides. So they're foolish and they're unfortunate. So if someone who thinks that I can share Krishna and say shots without guru and get perfection, he's foolish. And unfortunately. Nice question. It's been asked many times. Every time we answer it a little different way. Basically the same idea. Your answer was good. If you want the blessings of Shastra, you have to follow Shastra. If you want the blessing of the Holy Name, you have to follow Shastra. Shastra, so chanting Holy Name, we're making two offenses. Shastra, so, and then Shastra, so, you're making three offenses. Yes. Actually, you're making three offenses. Govinath Acharya Maharaji, Shastra Ji, is going to tell us about the three offenses you're making by not having Guru. <coughs> to disregard Shastra? Why? To disregard Shastra? Disregard Shastra Ninda. Shastra Ninda. Offend Shastra, disregard Shastra. Guru Avagya. Disregard and disrespect the Guru, Guru, Guru and Guru principle. And Sadhu Ninda. First offense is Sadhu Ninda. In the list of ten offenses from Pablo Fran, it says Parama. Parama. Aparadis, Sadhananda. The topmost offense is to offend Sadhus. So by not having a guru and Shang Arkhus, you're making three offenses to the Holy Name. So you're expecting the Holy Name to give you perfection. Oh, I'm not recording this. Anyway. This is a continuation of the question about no guru and attain perfection. So by not having a guru, you're reading Shastra. And but if you're not following Shastra, you can't get the perfection described in Shastra. So the Prabhupada Ram describes Das Abharat, Ten Abharats, Nam Das Abharat. So by not having a guru, you're making three offenses of the Holy Name. Sadhananda, Guru Avagi, and Shastra You're offending Sadhus and Vaishnavas everywhere I tell you to take a guru. You're offending Shastra, you're disregarding the principle of guru. By ignoring Guru and disregarding Guru, not accepting Guru. And, and the fourth event is Shastra in the Shastra everywhere say, the Tata Brahma Dignasa, uh, look for a Guru to find the absolute truth, and you're ignoring it. So good luck. Really, I mean to say no luck. <laughs> bad luck. No good luck, no luck, bad luck. Abhagya.
Look at her screen, praying up a shot. So, yeah. Come on. First count of Mandas, Mandas. I heard this a uh, hundred times on lectures of Brahma. I used to have all Brahma's lecture tapes or cassettes back in the 70s. I listened to everyone a hundred times. Every lecture. A thousand lectures. I used to have an earplug of my being a TV recorder. Six hours at the airport listening to lectures and selling books at the same time. <laughs> First canto of Bhagavatam, chapter 1, verse 10. Prayena, prayena, alpha yusha, alpha, alpha yusha, alpha, little, little life. <laughs> alpha, alpha means it did not. Tear, teeny, alva, alva, ayu. What does ayu mean? Ayurveda means the science of life. So alva, ayu, alva, pra, prayena, alva, ayu. People are short-lived. Prayena, alva, you, savya. Sav means everybody. Kali Yugajana. And Kali Yuga, this is a situation. Manda. Sumanda. <laughs> Matio. Mati means what? Mind. Mind, concept, intelligence, thought, thinking. Mati. Not salty preparation. Not donkey. <laughs> That's Mati. It's Mati. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Matamidam. 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 Jory, no, so powerful. Sumanda. Very, Sumanda means lazy. Sumanda, very lazy. Look at his face. She has one pill, she got another pill. She <laughs> they have Sumatia, they have crazy brain. Manda Bhagya, unlucky. And Uba Juta. Uvajuta, Uvajuta, always disturbed. No touch. <laughs> my baby, she left me. <laughs> I'm all by myself. <laughs> I'm, also, I'm so sad and I'm happy. <laughs> my baby, she left me. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the blues. See the blues. <laughs> Jai 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 Jai. Is there any more interesting questions? I don't think I recorded that one. I didn't have <laughs> I didn't record it. Any questions? You can just hear me. G. <laughs> Those are nice sweets, of little guys. Coconut. Yeah, coconut, gora, mm -hmm. juggery. Hey, they stay with you, you know? Eat on it for days or with you. Know. They, they haunt you like a boot, you know. <laughs> it's a very haunting taste. Very fresh coconut and uh, after burr. <laughs> Gore. Oh. 
give to devotees who had really bad experience in Krishna consciousness, like some problems with society gurus, and after they lost faith and. What advice can we give to burn out the holies? <laughs> <laughs> They had bad experience in some missionary society, or with Vaishnavas in general, and with gurus, etc. So what advice can we give them? I say you should go to Goa Beach, it's happening right now in Goa. <laughs> <laughs> it's winter time over here in most of Europe, and if anybody has any money, has smart, has time, will cut off to Goa Beach and party. Yeah. Dance and sing and surf, and eat all kinds of fruits and vegetables. And <laughs> Have a good time in Goa. Goa is a happening place. That's my advice to anyone that's burned out. <laughs> <laughs> that's one, one level of advice. <laughs> now a little higher grade advice. Satam Prasangam Mahaviriya Samvidha That's in there. Satyasana Great brain, great memory. Satam, that's ATM. Satam, it's a famous source from fourth candle or third candle, I forget. And uh, Prabhupada quoted it many times, he was very fa favorite verses. Satam Prasangam. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Oh yeah, it must be Kabila Shiksha. Kabila Shiksha, third candle of Avatam. Famous verse. What what chandas is it? Chandas is Ratodata. I gave you a sheet yet. Yes, Ray, I'll give another one for you. Satam Prasangan, Mamavi Samvido, Bhavanti Ritkarna, Rasayana Kata, Tatyoshana Tashra, Vavagavarbani, Shadara, Tir Bhakti Nukramishati. So the question is what advice can you give to a burned out devotee? Someone has had bad experience in the Vaishnava Sangha and had bad experience with his teachers and gurus and bad experience in life in general and with missions and gurus and Vaishnavas, what advice can you give? Kapil Muni gives the best advice to his mother Devahuti in third canto. He says you should associate with good devotees, proper devotees. The solution is not to run away from devotees, Susan is not to give up bhakti, not run away from, maybe you want to run away from society or some mission, that's one thing. But don't run away from Krishna and don't run away from devotees. He's saying if you find the proper devotee, they will speak harikata and fill your ear with nectar. They'll fill your ear with nectar, they'll fill your ear with happiness, inspiration, encouragement, and blessings. And gradually you'll experience your faith will increase, shut up, your bhakti will increase, anukrama. Anukrama means step by step. So the key, the solution to your problem is sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva shastroi, lava matra, sadhu sangha, sarva siddhioi. And she turned and showed me to Krishna, I don't know who said it, I forget. It says you associate with a sadhu for a few minutes, you become joyful, you become inspired, you become encouraged, you become hopeful. Devotee, Prabhupada Vaishnava is an abode of hope. He's an abode of joy, he's an abode of hope, he's an abode of compassion, he's an abode of wisdom, he's an abode of blessings. So what the person need, they need some, some tune-up. The devotional tune-up. Need to change their tires and keep running, and bhakti, not not junk your car. <laughs> Just change your tires. So sadhus are the greatest blessing on the earth. 
to see it so, to hear from it so, to serve it so, life becomes fortunate, peaceful, happy, and joyful. So it's very sad to hear this question that somebody loses their taste, loses their faith, and loses their inspiration to do bhakti bhajan for various reasons. But they should not give up hope. Hope is our Hope is our only shelter. It's described in Bhakti Yoga Ashabanda. Ashabanda is a symptom of love of God. The one has love for God. Yes, he he's bound. He's made. He's bound. He's tied up. He's bound by hope. So we're maybe not that advanced in Baba Bhakti. We're just beginning devotees. We have some hope. We have some hope that Krishna will help me. Many people have come to meet me over the last 35 years. I've been living 36 years, the whole time in Vrindavan Dham. So people know that. Uh, they have become famous around the world as a guy that's always here. He's always in Radha and he's always in Vrindavan Dham. So people come to me for shelter, come to me for advice from every, every direction, every side because they, they trust me because I'm not a public person, I'm not an influential person, I'm not mixing up in the world. So they, they unfold, they reveal their problems confidentially to me. Guya Makyachi Prichati, it's a symptom of love, and they get, ask for advice. So I try to advise them and heal their wounds and encourage them to go forward. So they pay me with honey. <laughs> Next time they come, they say, when they leave, they send a couple hours with me. And they leave, so well, can I give you a donation for your book printing? I said, no, I don't need any money. Can I give you anything? They said, no. I said, if you come back again, bring some honey. <laughs> bring some honey, good honey. That's all. And they do. <laughs> Honey is the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> mother, 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 mother. Nice question, thank you. It's, it's, uh, do I show it says, look at this, it's in the source, I don't know where it comes from. Vaishnav Kivambudi, look at that. V A I, Vaishnav Kivambudi. There's a general phrase in Bengali and Gaudiya Samurai, Vaishnava Kribambudi. Ambudi means ocean. Vaishnava is an ocean of mercy. Vaishnava means three qualities. These three qualities should be prominent if you're a devotee of Krishna. What are those three qualities? Wisdom, spiritual knowledge, love, spiritual love and compassion, joy, mercy, nothing. And it's a general understanding and Vaishnava keep on with you. Questions? Thanks, Kevin. <coughs> Could you talk about worshipping Devashima? Some devotees say it cannot be taken from Braj. Is there any reference for this in Shastra? The question is asked about worshipping Giraj Goran Shila. Oh, Giraj Daran Ki Jai Jai, jai Shirali. The question is, is there anything in Shastra that describes worshiping Giraj? Can Giraj be taken from Braj, etc.? In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antivita chapter 6, 
It describes Lord Chaitanya giving a Gauran Shila to Raghunath Das Goswami in Jagannath Puri. Now how that how that Gauran Shila get to Jagannath Puri? He went with one sadhu named Shankaranya. Shankaranya was some traveling sadhu that was in Vrindavan, picked up a Gauran Shila was worshipping, then he went to Puri and he was in Madhurasi Tani. He gave him a gift of a Gauran Shila. So that's how he Lord Chaitanya got it. Lord Chaitanya was worshiping that Shila with the tears of his eyes. He was being Avi, Ashu Abhishek, Prem Ashu Abhishek, Rose. Every day he was bathing Giraj with a tear. No. <laughs> no why also. Okay. He was bathing Giraj with the tears of love. And he had worship also a gunjamal, which is red and black berries. He put it around his neck, and when Nurse had the gunjamal around his neck, he thought of taking shelter of Raika Charan. This, this gunjamal represents lotus seed or Rani. So after some time, Nurse gave the Gauran Shila to Raghunath Das Goswami, and he taught him how to worship him. He said, Every day you bathe Giraj with water and offer him. Eight Tulsi Mandris, four Tulsi Mandris to the right foot and four to the left foot. Then offer Giraj some sweet, a piece of mystery, a piece of jaggery, uh, a spoon of honey, whatever, some kind of sweet, sweet thing. And that's it, Vasoga. In the Krishna book, the original Krishna book, 10th Candle Commentary by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In chapter 10th canto, chapter 24, Goran Lila, at the end of the chapter, this is in the pre-1978 pre edition. Prabhupada says, sometimes devotees take a stone from Goran, sometimes devotees take a stone from Goran and take it to their home and worship it just like a deity of Krishna in the temple. Well, this is written by Prabhupada in 1969 in ISKCON. It was one of the first books that was published in ISKCON. Because the first count of Bhagavatam was published in India and brought to America by Prabhupada, Anjala Dutta. In 1969, he published Krishna book, 10th canto. And his commentary is there that devotees, so he said, devotees in the Krishna conscious movement can take a stone from Gauru and worship it. So the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the instructions of Srila Prabhupada are some different points. Anyone can worship Gauru and you can take Gauru out of Vrindavan. As Prabhupada said, members of Iskand can take Giraj. Members of Iskand, there were no members of Iskand in India at the time, 1969. All the members of Iskand, 1969, we're living in London, Montreal, San Francisco, and New York City. So if the members of this country are going to take over on Shiva, they're going to take them out of India, take them out of Gora, and worship in London, Montreal, San Francisco, New York City. So the conclusion is, yes, you can worship here. It's very easy. If you have love and attachment, take them wherever, wherever you want to go and worship them. And practically we can see in this and Godiwa temples, and in temples all around the world, Giraj is being worshipped. In Japan, in Rus Russia, in England, South Africa, Central America, everywhere. Giraj Darn Kijai. Giraj Baba Kijai. Giraj Darn Teri Sharan Rakalaja Mari Shigovardan. Giraj Darn Teri Sharan. Rako Laja Hamari Shri Govardhan. Giri Govardhan Lai Sharan, Radha Krishna Ki Dei Sharan. Giri Govardhan Lai Sharan, Radha Krishna Ki Dei Sharan. Take shelter of Giri Govardhan, and Giri Govardhan will give you the lotus here, Radha Krishna. Giraj Dharan. Lai Sharan. Giraj Dharan Lai Sharan. Radha Krishna Ki Dei Charan. 
So I stay. So yeah. Take shelter of Giraj and attain the lotus seat of Radha Krishna. Radha in the Radha Mahal, Radha Gokulanda. Haryasvarya, Giraj Baba. Giraj right there over there. He's inside also. He's inside here also. He's here to rocket. <laughs> and rocket. Mook, Sheila Mook. No, Sheer. Sheer, she, Sheila Sheer. Rocket. <laughs> Questions? Baba. Yes, Sushmi, this question. Yes, Sushmi, right, right. Dadradi Gurudev, you have mentioned that before Bhakti Yoga, you have been practicing transcendental meditation and pranayam. Are those techniques helpful in our practice of Siddha Deha meditation? Very nice question. It's a practice of pranayam and uh, meditation, uh, transcendental meditation, it's helpful in the practice. Of Siddha Pranali, I mean, meditating on Nitya Asakali Lila, meditating on the Siddha Pranali, or excuse me, meditating on Mantri Sru, and rendering Manasi Seva to Radha Krishna and Asakali Lila. The answer is, of course, yes, because the mind has to be steady, the mind has to be shape. One of the biggest problems in any form of yoga is called weak shape. Weak shape means distraction, mental distraction, because in Svaran, there's five stages of smart described in Bhakti Sandara by Jiva Goswami. First stage is simple smart, simple remembrance. Second stage is Dharan. Dharan, holding the mind in one place, holding on the mind. Third stage is Dhyan. Fourth stage is Juvana Sriti. Fifth stage is Samadhi. So, three Ds. Double, two S's, three D's. What does that mean? Swaran, stage one. Dharan, Dhyan, Dhruva, D, D, D. S, D, D, S. S, triple D, S. That's the fun, that's the fun. Swaran, Dharan, Dhyan, Dhruva, Sri Samadhi. So samadhi is no weak shape. So our goal is samadhi means total absorption. Swarasiki, Swarasiki, Lila Dhyan. Like a flow of Ganji, Ganga, continuous flow. Nishan Lila, Pratak Lila, Apurvan Lila, Madhya Lila, Apurvan Lila, Madhya Lila, Apurvan Lila, Shayan Lila. Production, the Rashi, the Ashka, the continuous slow, one after the other. It's called Swara Siki. Swara Siki, yeah, the little meditation. So, this is the goal. So, breathing techniques, pranayam, and meditation are very helpful and very useful for, for meditating on Ashka. I recommend to do it. And Hari Bhakti Vilas, Sadanga Swami. Says when one chants his Gayatri, uh, generally this is among Brahmins. Brahmins means someone born in an Indian Gotra. One who's born in Indian Gotra and, and Brahman, Brahman Varna, Kshatriya Varna, or Vaishya Varna, he has the Adhikar, the qualification to receive Brahma Gayatri mantra and a Brahma we call Brahmins, but Jen, Jenayu. Or Jenayu. 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 He has the Adhikar, Kayas, Shudra, Malachi, Yavana, Antija, Russian, American, French, German. They have no Adhikar according to Veda, because Brahma Gaiji is a Vedic, Vedic mantra. It's called Vedic, Vedic mantra. There's Vedic mantra, there's two kinds of mantras. Vedic mantra, Pancharachika mantra. Pancharachika mantras are mentioned in Narada Pancharachika and Gopal Tavi Mahasha, different places, and they're for everyone, anyone. Gopal Mantra, Kaun anyone can take Diksha, woman, Westerner, anyone. Any Varna, any Ashram, any, any Janam, any Desh, any Janam. But Brahma Gaiji, Ombudu, etc., 
That's only for these three. So there it explains what I think. Yeah, it's, thank you. So when it's describing chanting of Sri Sandyavandanam, chanting of Varmakaichi, he says he wants to do pranayama before he chants the mantra. I was living in Radha Dhamma or Mandir in Sevakunj Vrindavan from 1989 to 1992. For three years I was living in Prabhupada's kitchen. You're, you weren't there then. Oh, those were good days. Those were really happy days, blissful days. I was young, healthy, and blissful, nobody around me, just me and Vrindavan, Rajaraj, happy days. <laughs> now, so, so I used to see a Pajari come out, we, uh, you make the bog offering at 11.30 in the, in the morning, Raj Bhog. They would come out and sit in front of the, the closed curtains of the Darsha Mandap, Radha Dhamma, and he would do Pranayam. He would go to Vaishnav, Nityananda Paribar, he would go to Pranayam for five minutes, then chant his Gattas, Brahmin thread. He was a Bhavaji, but he was born a Brahmin, so he kept his Brahmin thread because he was doing puja. There's uh, some attachment or whatever, some some niyam. Niyam, when you do puja, you just wear brown or whatever. It's Vaidhi Mark puja. But Rag Mark, you know, so many Bhavajis don't have, they give up Brahmin thread if there are Brahmins and they do puja. But he had Brahmin thread, he's Bhavaji. Some, some Bhavajis have Brahmin thread, some don't. They're Brahmins by birth and they give it up. Some don't. Whatever reason, I don't know. So he was doing pranayama, so it's very helpful and it's also bona fide. So you do pra if you want to do pranayama, make your mind very steady and do some meditation techniques you learn, then that will help help your meditation, help your chat and your job also. This is described also in a famous book called Art of Chanting. I describe these techniques in relation to chanting. Jai Jai Shri Radhe <laughs> You what? <laughs> number one, number two. <laughs> okay. Questions. Wait, Krishna Baba, question? He's a real yogi, he's wearing a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like five degrees. <laughs> he's like Brahma yogi, a uh, Himalayan yogi. <laughs> he hasn't seen much action. He hasn't been well for a few weeks, I think. Yeah, he, he's a little down these days. <laughs> He's our pride and joy. <laughs> He's our leader. <laughs> All right, we have some new guests here. Are you gentlemen or ladies have any questions, sir? You can ask in Hindi if you like. These, these guys know Hindi. Hindi Prashna Bhadkaro. I have a question. That how we can balance rasa and tattva together? As we are in the prema bhakti, so well, what's the last part? Rasa, yeah. rasa and tattva. How to balance rasa and tattva together? Nice questions asked. We have rasa, tattva, rasa, and we have tattva. So how to balance the two together? This is the speciality of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. The Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya is trained personally by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and by Sri Dhammar Goswami. Sri Dhammar Goswami trained Raghunath Das Goswami for 16 years in Jagannath Puri. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally trained Rupa Goswami and Stan Goswami. And Chaitanya Charitamrita, the, the teachings Lord Chaitanya gave to them is in chapter 19, Madhya chapter 19, 
through 25. It's called Snat, Ruba Shiksha and Snatan Shiksha. So Lord Chaitanya personally taught them. So he taught them that whenever you preach Tattva, whenever you preach, whenever you write about Rasa, make sure you describe the Tattva. So you want to have a balance, you want to have a balance of Rasa and Tattva, you should read the books by the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, beginning with Ruben Snatan and all the subsequent followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Skaviraj, Vrindavan Das Thakur, Baladevi Dibhusha, Narutan Das Thakur, uh, Vishnu Chakravarti. You read the books of these great Acharyas, and by modern, modern Acharyas, the one that we're most familiar with is Sri Anantadas Prabhupada Maharaj. Anantadas Prabhupada, Sri Anantadas Prabhupada Maharaj is Goloka Dham, Ga, Dhamma, uh, Gata. He's gone to Goloka Dham, but he wrote fantastic books perfectly blending his commentaries on Stavali, commentaries on Prima Bhakti Jamaica, commentaries on Shikshastakam, commentaries on Stavala, commentaries on many, many books, are a perfect blend of Ras and Tava. So I recommend you read his books. They're available in Bengali and also Hindi, Russian, English, many languages. But you must be knowing Hindi or Bengali so you can read in the original language. He wrote in Bengali and spoke in Bengali, are you Bengali? Hindi speaking. So you get the books in Hindi. They're available here in the Prickle Mart in the bookstore. I recommend his books are best. I've personally been studying his books in English for 36 years. I've been living here in Rindal and Rockland. I'm studying his books. So I, you can get a perfect understanding of Ross and Tyler just by reading his books. Is it clear? Radha Sudhani, he's coming to Radha Sudhani. Well, it's very good. It's good to go through that book with a guru, with your Sikh guru or Diksha guru. When you're not that Swabhaji, he's also a Sikh guru. You have his commentaries. Big red, red, big red book, huh? Yeah, you have Radha Sudhani, which book? Radha Whose commentaries? Yeah. It's a big red book, I think. Yeah, big class. Yes. A very good book. So that'll give you about 80% of the idea. If you have a teacher to go through it, you get 100%. Maybe 150. <laughs> Depends on how high the teacher is. <laughs> jai Jai Shri Radhe. <laughs> so, nice question. Thank you. Or cooch. <coughs> All right, knock <they're> out, man. <laughs> Morcha. <laughs> Stemba. Kalaya. Oh. What's up? Ginger tea. Black pepper. People, people eat. <laughs> son, son, people eat. Mystery, boil together. Two cups of water, call, boil down to one. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> In heart, you said the same thing? In heart, yes. So, of course, best to <laughs> accept in heart. But can person in the level on Anarthani really <coughs> accept in heart, even heart? Because it's like high level. Or we always accept in mind, you know, how it works. Why you can you explain the last word? So, how to understand you accept Guru in mind or in heart? Or can person in Anarthani really accept Guru in heart? Okay, the question is about a disciple accepting Guru. You can accept Guru in the mind, you can accept Guru in the heart. So what is the relationship 
between accepting Guru in the mind and heart and the stage of an art's liberty. The implication of the question is, unless one is sufficiently purified and is accepted, oh, I don't get the last part, I don't get the connection with an art and liberty. Can you explain this again? I understand the mind and accept my heart. What about the art and liberty? How, please explain that part. I'm not clear about what you're asking. Yeah, in, in the level of anathanivriti, how can we exp- ex- accept Guru? On which level? Okay, the question is, at the level of art and liberty, how can we accept Guru? First of all, let's back up. We're talking about two different, two different ideas here. One is an art and liberty, which is a state of purification of the citta. Purific- it's the level of purification of the consciousness. Which means all the chitta means where all the samskar chitta means the subconscious mind. There's a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is sometimes called chitta, C H I T T A. There's indriya, there's man, there's buddhi, there's hankar, there's chivatman. But this buddhi, buddhi, the mind is divided into two aspects conscious mind, subconscious mind. So the chitta is called subconscious mind. So these are eight coverings of the jivatma. Bhumir apo nalo vayo kamano bhudrevacha. But that's what Gita said. Gita chapter 7, verse 6 and 7 describe the coverings of the jiva. Five, Linga shir and Shukshan shir. Earth, earth, water, fire, ether is, is Linga shir or Shukshan shir. And Linga shir is man, buddhi, and hankar. So that's eight. But the uh, Upanishads describe nine coverings of the jiva. Chitta is nine. Chitta sometimes is lumped together with mind, sometimes made a separate category. So mind can have two divisions, conscious mind and subconscious mind. So subconscious mind in the chitta is all the samskaras. Samskaras, vasana, sanchit karma, kriyamana karma, or sometimes called kutam bijam, abhravda, pravda, pravda, all the karmas and all the vasanas desires for action, for may may lies restored in the chitta. Now that chitta has to be purified. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains in Shikshasakam, Chaito Darbana Marjana. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now, Sankirtan Ki. From Vijay Sri Krishna Sankirtan Ki. So the shit has become purified by Nambhajan. That's chitta. Now, guru is a whole other category. They're not related. One is, one, is, one is psychological, psychological, and karmic purification of the chitta. Now, one, another, another, that's one, the whole line, the whole description, all kinds of tavas, tavas and sadhanas and uh, everything involved there. Now, guru tava, guru tava is a whole other tava. And Guru, walking the path of Guru is a whole other thing. Except, uh, what level to accept Guru? How much do you accept Guru? First of all, you have to back up to the beginning point. The beginning point is called initiation, Diksha. Diksha is described in Hari Bhakti Vilas, and in Bhakti Sandarva, and Bhakti Rasmita Sindhu, and Chaitanya Chaitanya, everywhere Diksha is described. So what does Lord Chaitanya describe? Look at this verse here, Diksha Kali. Lord Chaitanya describes Diksha and Chaitanya charged me to, onto the other chapter uh, 6 or something. Diksha Kali. This is no shooting. Onto the chapter floor. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally is describing Diksha. 
the tenant charge reading down to the chapter 4, verse 192 to 193. Prabhukai, Diksha Kali, Diksha Kali, Atma Samarpan, Se Kali, Krishna Tari, Krishna Atma Sama. Se Deha Kari Tara Chirananda Mai, Aprakrita Dehi Tanra Charna Bajai. This is the definition of diksha. So initiation means diksha. You get Gopal Mantra Kamgaji from Guru and different instructions. So at the time of getting diksha, the disciple does Bhakta Kari Atma Samarpan. Atma Samarpan means you, you, when you take diksha, you surrender, you surrender your heart. Arma Samarban. Samarban means, Arpa means you offer. You put in your hand, you make a complete offering. Some Arpa means a complete offering. Man, Tan, Dan, Guru Samarban. So I said, Arpa means, Arpa means body. Arpa means mind, Arpa means heart. So that's what the meaning of diksha is. So before you get the diksha, Haribhakti says you should wait four years. Minimum four years before you take diksha. During that four years, you practice giving your body, mind, and heart to Guru. Some people wait 14 years. So when they start off, when they get diksha, they shoot off like a rocket ship. They're 14 years on the, li on the runway. Or 14 years on what they call a takeoff stand. What a launch, launching pad. <laughs> You're 14 years on a launching pad. When you, when you light those booster rockets, boom! Chandrayana moon landing. Parapat, Jolly Crow, Tron, Tron. Boom! <laughs> Chandrayana moon, Chandrayana moon landing. <laughs> Like that, that's how they landed. <laughs> Got a large <alarm> system. <laughs> <laughs> so one level accepting heart, uh, you know, offering your heart and mind to Guru, that should be done before you take diksha. Then you just sweet, you make your heart more sweet. Make your mind more pure and more attached as you serve Guru as your diksha. And our devotee says something else goes on while you It goes on while you sleep. <laughs> relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, relax. <laughs> What's the verse from Sekhikanta Vavatam? Srivatam Svakata. We miss you, you're not coming anywhere, you're playing hooky, cutting school. You're not Saturday, not here. Oh, you're saying you're ambassador, but you know, I'd like to see your prime minister. <laughs> you're trying to play my role now? <laughs> oh, oh, so, so sore. <laughs> This is a verse in the Bhagavatam, first canon, what chapter? Second, second chapter. <laughs> second chapter. Verse 17. Oh, I, want to, I want to see you speaking. I must see Sutta Goswami, I guess. Ah, Sutta Goswami. Yeah, must see. Okay. Sutta Goswami says to the sages in the Mishranya, chapter 2, first canon of Bhagavatam, chapter 2, is very important. Has all the, you talk about Tava and Rasa, has all the Tava of, of Vaishnavism, Krishna Bhakti, you summarize in first canon of chapter 2. Vasudeva Bhavati, Savai Bhonsan Pro Dharma, all very important verses. Every single verse of the second chapter is quoted in Prabhupada's Shloka book. It's a collection of Prabhupada's favorite shlokas, he has a whole chapter 2 is in there. So, Sutta Goswami said to Shankarishi at Naimisharanya, which is there over near Meru or somewhere on the way to. Where is, where is Naimisharanya? On the way to Hardware or something? Somewhere in UP. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Brilliant Extoya Bajani Viduna Disuritam Krishna is in the heart whenever any Shinvatam Swakata Krishna whenever anyone hears Krishna Kata which is purifying and beautiful Punya Shravana Kirtan this shravan, the hearing and chanting about Krishna is Punya what does Punya mean? The Sanskrit word punya means beautiful, means pleasing, means beautiful, means pleasing, means pavacham, means purifying. There's many Sanskrit means when you hear Krishna Gata, your heart and mind become beautiful. Punya. Punya is shravana kirtana. Shravana means to hear, kirtana means to speak. When you hear and speak about Krishna, you become beautiful. <laughs> Like me. <laughs> you become beautiful. You become pure. Punya means pure. Pavacham. And you become all auspicious. Saramangalam. The life becomes Saramangalam. All auspicious. This is the meaning of Punya. Punya doesn't mean pious credits. What's pious credit? Pious credits mean Punya karma. Good deeds. Okay, that's also there. But my definition is based on the Sanskrit word meaning and the commentaries of Jiva Goswami on this word punya. So that's a very nice explanation. Because there is a verse in the Bhagavatam 10th canto in chapter 12, 10th canto chapter 12, 11 or 12, talking about the Sakas, the coward boy friends of Krishna. So how do they get to be, how do they get to be Krishna's devotees? And the Sanskrit verse, Shukriya Goswami says, Krita Punya Punja. Krita Punya Punja. The word Punya is there. Punja, P U N G A. Punja means heaps of, mountains of, concentrated. So it's tra generally externally translated as these coward boys did lots of Punya karma, they did lots of pious activities. But this is not the meaning of Sugaya Goswami because by Punya karma you cannot attain Krishna Bhagavad you can't attain Krishna Leela, you can't attain Krishna Prema by Punya, Punya Karma. So in this context, Shiva Goswami's commentary on the Bhagavatam, 10th canto chapter 11 or 12, this verse appears. He said, Punya doesn't mean pious activities. Punya Karma doesn't mean that. It means beautiful, beautiful activities which please Krishna. Beautiful activities which please Krishna means cooking a nice lunch. <laughs> Pretty means beautiful activities, beautiful, purifying, auspicious. So what does that mean? It means these coward boys got to become, got the citadel of a coward boy, a sucker. They got the citadel of a gova and Krishna's bone burned out in Leela. How they, how they, they're called sadhana siddha govas. Sadhana Siddha Govas. In their previous life, they practiced Raghunuga Bhakti, following Sridham and Subal and, and Sakirati, and they got blessed to take birth in Bhoma Vrindavan, Prakat Lila of Krishna, as Govas, coward boys in Vrindavan. They took birth from Bhoma of Gobi. Why, how they got their position? Not by Punya, but by beautiful activities in their previous life, which pleased Krishna, which means they did Rag Bhakti and Sakirati. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. This is a proper title based on Goswami commentary and the teaching of my Guru they also. <laughs> Pandasi Krishna Das Prabhupada Maharaj Ki. So while you're doing your bhakti bhajan, your heart is autom this verse means your heart is automatically purified. Srimatan Sarkata Krishna Punya Shavanaki. How's it going on? It's just showing uh, Sri Goswami said, really anta really anta sta, really means heart, remember H-R-D-I, really means heart, anta means inside, sta means standing, really anta sta, Krishna Paramatma is sitting inside the heart of every sadhaka, and vidu noti sarit satam, abhajani, all abhajani, abhajani means an art of liberty. You ask how is an art of liberty going on? I say it's going automatically while you sleep. Anarta means abhaja, inauspicious things, abhraj, sins, sins and abhraj, 
are called abhaja, the illustrations. So it says, abhaja, you read it out of these shirts to them. The Krishna is in the heart, and you purify the heart while, while you're doing your cooking, or reading, or sleeping, or bathing, or anything. All this is bhakti. So, one thing is surrendering the Guru with body and heart and mind, a loving Guru. The other thing is getting purified. A, 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 how's it go? Yeah. A dose. 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 You don't have to worry about that separately. The most important thing is to give your heart and mind to grow and everything's done. I can't emphasize that enough. It's so simple, it's because it's easy to love someone. If you can find someone to love. Because the nature of the jiva is to love. Jivara Srupaya this is Srub Lakshana. Srub Lakshana the Jiva. The prime prime characteristic. Srub Lakshmi means the character is the attribute. Srub, Srub, Jivara Srub, the Srub Lakshan of the Jiva is what? Dasyabhav. Dasyabhav. Dasyarati means service. You can't serve someone you don't love. No. You can't serve someone you don't trust. You can't serve someone you don't have faith in. Look at all modern marriages. All modern marriages go belly up. <laughs> <laughs> They gave belly flop because of lack of faith, lack of trust, right? So you can't serve something you don't love. A lack of love, lack of trust, lack of faith, divorce, divorce. So Guru, you shouldn't get divorced from Guru. <laughs> <laughs> Get divorced from your wife, husband, that's good, that's a good idea, but <laughs> no, we, uh, that's a dharmic, we don't preach that, we don't advise that, but it happens automatically. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to preach that in Kali Yuga, it happens automatically. <laughs> but you have to preach dharma, because that's the more important, that's Krishna's will. Chaturvanya Mayasusa, Guna Karmi Vagasa. Krishna said, for honors, for honors. Jai Jai Shri Rani. I'm getting very good questions today. I'm very excited. I also had a good lunch. <laughs> now it's starting to get into gear. It's starting to adjust. The cook, the cook called me Yee. <laughs> I cleared it to these plates and it was stuff, some of the stuff left in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. I took my hands <laughs> like this. It was, oh, it was. And, and the person who came with the kid I was so mad. What are you, what are you doing? Here? What? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I had raspberry on my <laughs> Some kind of raspberry cream or something. I don't know. Strawberry. Uh, in Wait a second, I have to make a new file, every question make a new file, wait a second. Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, Maharaj, in one of, one of your articles you have written, Anastasia, it can uh, uh, make us come out of material pain. So, holy name is so powerful, it acts more powerful than Anastasia. So, how to practice chanting so that it, it acts best Anastasia like that? So you're asking a question, how can you go to the dentist and save money on anesthesia? <laughs> <by checking? laughs> you save 10 bucks, no anesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you say? Just share it, Chris, don't worry about it. <laughs> what do you want to say? So, how to practice chanting so that we don't defect, get affected by material pain? I mean, 
to move out of material. The question, okay, thank you, sir. Nice question. The question is, how can we perfect our chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra so we don't feel the pains of material life? We can't avoid the pains of material life because they're arranged by God. The main pains of material life are Janma Mitra Javyadi. These are very painful situations. I've been through all of them, uh, well, except for me too. <laughs> the three or four I've already experienced, Janma, Vyadi, and Jara. So it's painful. So, but we find that when devotees share Krishna, Krishna re separates us from the pain. Because there's something called a coconut. A nariel, taza nariel. There's a fresh coconut. The coconut, when it's fresh, it's, it's one unit. There's a shell and the flesh, in the white uh, coconut uh, substance inside the coconut. You shake it, it's one, it's one unit. But when the coconut gets very ripe, this, the, sub, the white substance, the coconut inside the shell, separates from the shell. It dries out and becomes, there's no name for that, dry coconut. You know, you buy it in a shop, you grind it, something like that. Anyway, when it gets very really ripe, all the water inside the coconut dries out. And then you shake it, you dunk, 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 dunk. So the, co the shell is there and the coconut is there. So automatically by chanting, the shell of the coconut is the external body. The shell of the coconut is the external body. Uh, Sharir, Indriya, Man. That's external to the Atman. And the inside, the coconut shaking, that's the Atman. So Chang Hare Krishna separates the coconut from the shell. It separates the Atman from the body. There's a verse in Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. Look it up. I think it's, if it's, maybe it's in this one. Yeah, yes, sir. No, it's there. It's, not, it's in that one. It's the first one. Yeah, yes, sir. That's it. There's a famous verse in Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. Hari Bhakti Sudodaya is written by Vaisha Payanavyas. I H A. Yeah, yes, sir. That's it. Karma Manasagira. Nikolas Rasarasa Su Jiamuta Sujate. Thank you. This is a verse it's quoted from it's quoted in Bhakti Rasa by Rubu Goswami Pan. But it's actually if you look there, you'll see a citation in the Sanskrit edition or Hindi edition. It comes in Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. I read Hari Bhakti Sudodaya in English. Iha yasya hari ardasye karmana manasagira nikalasra vivastasu jiva mukta sushate. It describes the jiva mukta. Jiva mukta means I'm living this body, I'm a Russian girl, I'm an Indian man, I'm an American man, but uh, my atma is, my, uh, my coconut's liberated from my shell. <laughs> my atma is not attached to the body. One who engages in Krishna bhakti, hari das. Hari Das, Hari Dasi. Yes, Hari Dasi. With Karma, Karm, Man, Gira. Gira means with his body, mind, and speech. He engages body, mind, and speech. Gira means, remember, G -G -R, we don't know where it is. Gira means speech. Karma, Masa, Gira. He becomes. He attains uh, avasta. He attains avasta mukti. He attains position of liberation. So one who engaged in Krishna bhakti, by which one form of Krishna bhakti is chanting Hare Krishna mantra, he automatically becomes detached from the body. So he doesn't feel the pains of the body. But jiva mukta is living in the body, but by his consciousness separates from the body. Like the dry, ripe coconut separates from the shell. Do you understand? It will happen with everyone. So you see, when advanced devotees, advanced in bhakti, they don't feel the pain is there, but they don't feel because their mind is not affected by that pain, because their mind has become purified. Chaitanya Dharma Marjan. 
Dharma and Marjan. Dharma means the mirror of the mind. Chit Dharvan Man Dharvan. Man Dharvan Shud Hojaga. The mind, mind becomes pure and the mind separates from the the mind and the obvious the obvious separates from the body and mind it doesn't feel any connection. There's an anesthesia, you get shot, you don't feel the joy in the teeth. So it happens automatically, just keep chanting and keep doing service. I I experienced many pains in my life. I didn't wasn't affected by it. It's not it's not what happens to you that counts. It's how you respond to the what happens to you. How, how you respond depends on the purification and development of your consciousness. If you're a spiritual consciousness, you're spiritual. If you're a material consciousness, you're material. It's that easy, that simple. So you're a devotee, so you'll experience this state of detachment. What's the time now? I felt like that. Okay, that's our class goes from three to five. Is there any questions hanging on that? Jai Jai Radhe Jai Jai Shah Jai Jai Shri Rinda Vinda Shamakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Vanshikova Trubyascha Kriva Sindhu Vaivacha Sita Nam Havanibhya Vaishnavibhya Nama Shri Rajadam Kijai Radhakundam Kijai Radharani Kijai Shavasana Bhagavan Kijai Shankar Radhakun Giri Govardhan Kijai Rajaraj Kijai Imanu Devi Kijai Vanshmukhi Hanuman Kijai Vanshmukhi Shiva Kijai Ute Sharma Devi Kijai Gobi Sharma Devi Kijai Chakva Sharma Devi Kijai Nani Sharma Devi Kijai Vankhani Ma Devi Kijai Kami Sharma Devi Kijai Jai Jai Shri Ram